Okay, last spot in Austin. We are at, I guess, the current or future home of the Office of Innovation. According to Aust the city of Austin's website, this is the address they gave for their Office of Innovation, although it's the former public library branch, I guess that's been relocated, so it's a construction zone. It's unclear if they're actually in there at this point, but that's the address they give, so this is where we came. Um, it's, I think it's a fitting end because essentially the last few days we've been talking about um, blockchain and tracking individuals through digital identity and the metaverse uh, in life as a militarized uh, augmented reality video game. And ultimately, if you, you've listened to some of my previous talks, we know that the, um, the bets that are going to be placed on people's lives as human capital commodities, data commodities, it all goes back up the chain to the hedge funds who are betting on outcomes. But at the end, at the, the, all of the, the framing is critical. And so all of this is going to be framed as transparent and efficient and good government and that uh, lean governments that don't have a lot of resources will start to enter into public-private partnerships, uh, into these pay-for-success or other outcomes-based contract deals. And then they will start to fully privatize what little exists of the social safety net as it is. And then those people uh, who need services, whether they be education, health care, um, food assistance or housing will be, uh, you know, players in the game, players in this game of uh, social impact, uh, digital, digital citizenship. And so, you know, I live in Philadelphia. We are also sort of a big data government. Uh, we, our first efforts in o open data government actually came uh, from a gentleman who worked for the police department and later he was at his background was in landscape architecture and then he left the police department and created a for-profit company called Asavea where he lobbied the city to open all of our data and then from that he created poli predictive policing software that he sold back not only to our city but to other major metropolitan areas. So essentially they were um, unlocking the vaults of all of the city data for corporations to develop, use this data and develop products um, that were in the, at the end of the day sort of increasing the state surveillance of the domestic populations and, and that's that was my experience with open data. Now here in Austin as I've mentioned several times they are part of this uh, data-driven analytics as well and the Office of Innovation is at the center of that. So um, let me just take a moment, I this is from their website and this is um, uh, just a, a few of the things that they are up to um, and this is taken directly from the city of Austin Office of Innovation. We help you make an impact. Surprise, surprise. So the impact is the header term here and I'm just going to skim through. Um, they work with teams to identify solutions to complex challenges. Isn't that always the way? And um, so they're unlocking outcomes. So outcomes is data, data and impact. They are growing a culture of co-creation, research, and experimentation. So citizens become wrapped up in these experimental programs that are sort of digital and disruptive often. Uh, they are building networks inside and outside of government. So that's the public-private partnership, the sort of outsourcing of government to non-accountable partners. What we're working on, these are things that the Office of Innovation is working on. Um, understanding and designing solutions for homelessness and improving access to identity services using blockchain technology. So that ties back in with our Texas Blockchain Summit yesterday. Um, underneath that, they say, we are exploring ways that emerging tools may create a secure permanent identity for those experiencing homelessness. And that they are using those emerging technologies to solve real problems for real people. Um, and then the last I I element is open government. Okay, so this, uh, blockchain identity solutions that they're talking about is connected to the MyPass program, that is the uh, ID2020 program connected to Bloomberg Philanthropies as well as the Robert Woods Johnson Foundation. But then in addition to that, um, the, the Travis County where the city of Austin is located was also a pilot program for, as I mentioned earlier, a pay for success finance project uh, through uh, HUD and the Department of Justice to create permanent uh, supportive housing for uh, a few dozen people experiencing homelessness. So increasingly, the housing market 
for these individuals will be linked into these pay for success finance deals, uh, digital identity, and outcomes-based uh, tracking, whether that be outcomes related to managing addiction, uh, managing reskilling, um, managing all sorts of behavioral compliance in the game that is being built within Smart City uh, Surveillance Austin. And all of this, again, is, is being framed as transparent and accountable. Um, but this isn't something that just the city of Austin came up with and they, they just thought it all up on their own. In 2016, um, the city, city of Austin, okay, this is a, a city of Austin press release, uh, date April 14th, 2016. They were part of it is the only municipality in the United States chosen to participate in the Open Government, government Partnership Program for regional governments worldwide to collaborate on innovations and transparency. So transparency is really code word for blockchain, that and trust. So the city of Austin is part of a global experiment across 70 countries. Um, it's the only US city, so this is very significant. Um, and it's because they have a track record using technology tied to their government, us, including civic ha hackathons, and clearly the presence of major employers in the city tied to both uh, regular technology and also defense contracting is key in that space. Uh, there were only seven other cities that were selected, and they included Paris, uh, Madrid, Sao Paulo, Seoul, Buenos Aires, uh, Tbilisi and Seconde Terukadi uh, in Ghana. And then there were seven regional governments, um, Ontario, Canada, uh, Scotland, uh, uh, Bonigoro, Indonesia, La Libertad, Peru, uh, Ekio Makarat uh, in Kenya, uh, Jalisco, Mexico, and Kigoma, Tanzania. Okay, and so Tanzania is actually a focus point for Cardano on blockchain. Um, and so they're working on this open government, on data-driven solutions um, connected to their law department, uh, to online communications with the public. Um, and let me see, their uh, uh, vision zero, so that's part of the pedestrian safety. So all of this is being framed as uh, open data and innovation, but it's not happening independently. It isn't as though the citizens of Austin decided to do this. They applied to be part of a large cohort of 70 countries that are all pursuing open governance. And once we realize this is getting on the blockchain and then these blockchain systems start to feed into these larger technology companies, that e-government solutions are on the way. And then who's accountable once you're on blockchain and you're trying to access your government? I think many of us realized over the past 18 months that uh, due to the biosecurity state, face-to-face ac -face access to your government was just cut off. You were just not available for that. And, you know, I spoke previously about um, last August, there was a program with the state of uh, Rhode Island and Israel talking about how they could use uh, the biosurveillance system to scale electronic government solutions, that this was the perfect opportunity because of reduced access of in-person to just really go whole hog on e-government solutions, including digital identity, because to manage your relationship with the government, they need you to have this unique identity where all of your data is interoperable, and that is the blockchain solution. Now, the, the last important thing to note for Texas is that, you know, I know many people who are, you know, concerned about what is going on um, in the world in terms of repressive measures in, in, and in, increased uh, digital enclosures are flocking to places like uh, Texas and Florida. But what the people who are really focused on the health outcomes are not thinking about is that there are many other ways to um, advance this totalitarian control system. Among them, central is the electronic government solutions. And many states are now adopting digital identity tied to digital driver's licenses. Colorado is one of them. And um, Texas, uh, this past spring, a bill was introduced, uh, Texas House Bill 273. Um, and it was introduced in April or May. And now it's, I think it's sitting in the Transportation Committee. So it hasn't quite passed. But there's tremendous pressure to get your uh, digital identity online. And one of the companies that's advancing that is called Idemia. And they, they are pitching what's called augmented identity. They're actually doing the digital driver's licenses in the state of Oklahoma. So right now it's optional. And just like the electronic transcripts that we've talked about, it's, it's, it's advanced as a convenience. But knowing the way the e-government 
trajectory is going, the data-driven government, the outsourced public-private partnerships, it's going to become a requirement. That is what's going to be coming online next. And this Idemia company is actually based in France. It's not an American company. And they're also controlling um, the airport security in most major airports. So that the security check-in is also going through Idemia. So again, within the enclosures and the geofencing, it's all melded together, but it's being sold to us in the name of accountability, transparency, efficiency, um, data-driven, um, you know, we have scarce resources and that we're going to put those resources to best effect by managing our populations really as domestic livestock um, in this game. And I will just say it again, it's a military game. The metaverse is a military game. The, the people who are trying to seek permanent housing, who have experienced homelessness, who are caught up in the uh, prison industrial complex system or systems of addiction or economic insecurity, it's not getting better. The fourth industrial revolution is not here to make things better for the masses. It is here to further concentrate wealth and social control within systems that increasingly are not even accountable to people. These are increasingly being driven by AI, by global hedge fund portfolios that are being run on high frequency trading. And people, while some people may be betting for a good outcome for you, there are, there's an equal chance that people are betting that you're gonna fail. And that is not the world that we want for our children. That is not a charitable worldview. That is not a worldview of reciprocity. And you know, a lot of people have been sold a lot of stories about what democracy actually is. Um, and we've gone along and many people have known that democracy here in this country hasn't actually worked for them for a very long time, if ever. And now that the scope of that, that injustice is gonna get much, much wider. And we have to, we have to reckon with that. There's a profound reckoning that's going on. And we have to see um, these innovative disruptions for what they are, um, further digital enclosures.